What you'll need for this is a Tyline 3G HSDPA module, which looks like this, a 3G antenna, which is supplied with your module, and a SIM card for your telco network, which has been activated with a data plan. First thing we're going to do is place the SIM card into the 3G wireless module. The 3G module has a wireless SIM card slot on the left hand side just here. Make sure the SIM card, the gold section of it, is facing downwards before you place it into the slot and push it firmly in until it clicks into place where it will be locked into place. The module is now ready to slide into the codec. Make sure your codec is powered down before you do this to make sure that you don't damage the module. Once the module is in the codec, you can attach the antenna to the main antenna connection point. It's also possible to put the two module screws on either side to lock the module into the codec, which is a good idea if it's on the road all the time. OK, now that the module is inserted into the codec, we can attach power to the codec and program the codec using the menu selector, the soft key buttons and the LCD screen. It'll take a few seconds for the codec to initialise and then we'll be able to program. The first thing we should check is that 3G IP1 is displayed on the codec screen. This means the module has been recognised by the codec and if press enter is displayed next to that it means the SIM card is recognised by the network. S5 is the signal strength. The signal strength should be between 4 and 9 for reliable wireless connections. If you put the module into the codec and find that unavailable is displayed on the screen, that could mean one of two things. Firstly, the SIM card may not be in the module, or the SIM card may have a PIN number and be locked. This means you need to remove the SIM card, put it into a cell phone and remove the PIN lock feature before reinserting it into the module and into the codec. It's always best to have the correct country code programmed into your codec and this is normally done when you purchase it in your country of origin. You can check the setting by pressing soft key for menu, scrolling to configuration, scrolling and selecting system settings and then selecting country. I'm in Australia so mine is correct. Press the clear button on the keypad to return to the main screen when you're happy. Now we're ready to program our codec for the wireless connection. There's a simple wizard for programming 3G connections available by pressing soft key button 3. Press OK to confirm you wish to proceed and make sure you select 3G UMTS in the wireless network settings. Press OK and then select your IP network of your telco. In my case it's this one here. I use the menu selector to choose it and press OK. A warning message is displayed to make sure you've chosen the right setting. Press OK when you're happy with that. Then you're asked if you wish to program auto reconnect, which will reconnect the connection if it drops out. I'm going to leave it disabled, but you can enable this if you wish. Press OK and the connection is configured. We're now ready to make a connection. I've selected a mono profile by pressing soft key 2, the profile button. Press the button again and then yes to confirm. I've attached some audio to input 1 of my codec. I turn input 1 on and adjust the level using the gain control pot. Audio should meter and peak at around about the first solid bar. Making a wireless connection is a two stage process. First, we connect to the 3G network. To do that, we make sure our connection has the flashing square brackets surrounding 3G IP. Then, we press the Enter Dial button on the codec. We'll see that it is in a process of connecting and then connects and directs you to go and make the IP connection to your codec. Use the rotary menu selector to select IP1 until the flashing brackets are surrounding IP1. Then enter the IP address that you wish to call. This should be a public static IP address. Press the star or hatch button to enter the periods in the IP address.
Then press the enter dial button to make the connection. Once it connects, you will see the local and remote connection link quality displayed on the right hand side. To adjust the bitrate upwards, press the F2 button and 3 on the keypad. Adjust the connection bitrate upwards until you are happy. Press the F2 and 9 buttons on the keypad to negotiate the bitrate downwards. For best performance, the dialing codec should be used to renegotiate connection bit rates up and down. We recommend you start with a conservative bit rate setting of 24 kilobits a second and see how the network performs at this bit rate. We don't recommend connecting immediately at higher bit rates of say 64 or 128 over 3G networks until you're sure your network can support these data rates. The link quality readings here are excellent, so you can renegotiate higher if required. It's a case of trial and error and the data rates supported will often vary greatly from region to region and even from day to day. If you're using a low bitrate algorithm like Timeline Music, there's no need to connect at high bit rates. It's just using more data and costing more money. You could use the local and remote LQ numbers to help you determine if there's a problem occurring at one end of the connection or the other. If the L value is low, there's a problem receiving incoming data. If the R value is low, there's a problem sending data. In this connection I've connected at 192 kilobits per second and the L reading is low. I can press F2 and 9 to reduce the connection bit rate and try and make the connection more stable. This connection is stable at 112 kilobits per second. The jitter buffer in your codec is programmed by default to automatically measure network congestion during the first couple of minutes that you are connected. It will automatically adjust the IP packet buffering to suit the prevailing network conditions. The default best compromise setting is the best setting in nearly all situations. Finally, to hang up your connection, ensure the square brackets are surrounding IP1, then press hang up. Confirm that you wish to hang up and the IP connection will disconnect. Next, hang up your 3G connection. Remember, it's a two-step process to connect and disconnect. Put the square brackets surrounding 3G IP1 and select hang up on the keypad and confirm you wish to hang up. Finally, forward error correction or FEC can be used to send additional packets over IP connections but we don't recommend using FEC over wireless IP as it can constrain bandwidth when you send the additional packets. If you need any further information, visit the FAQ support section on our website where there's lots more tips for IP and wireless IP connections.